Hey guys, Chad here from CNR Reviews. Um, we have two great carry options here. These are both 1911s, and uh, we have the Kimber Ultra Carry 45 to compare today with the SIG P938 9mm. Now, some of you guys are going to go, well, you cannot compare a 9mm to a 45. And yes, you can. It's a carry gun. And so, my solution is to this whole problem is that the, the 45, the Kimber, a lot of people after this video is probably for the people who already own this gun. Um, and maybe they're looking for something that is a little bit lighter, that still packs a punch, that they can carry in their shorts pockets, or maybe it's a little bit easier to conceal. Um, unfortunately, this Kimber fully loaded up with 45s um, is going to weigh over 30 ounces fully loaded. Um, and I believe it's actually around 32 ounces. This SIG fully loaded up is going to range anywhere between 18 and a half and 19 ounces fully loaded up. Um, let's talk about features because when I say they're 1911s, this SIG 938 is actually loosely based on the 1911. The Kimber Ultra Carry is a true 1911. And what I mean by that is it actually has a beaver tail safety, it's got the thumb safety, it's got the, the barrel bushing in the front to take down, and it is a 1911. You have to have the beaver tail engaged to shoot, to, to engage the trigger. Now, when I say the SIG is loosely based upon it, what I mean by that is it's similar in design, but it's miss missing the barrel bushing, it has no beaver tail safety, it only has a thumb safety, and this one it happens to be an ambidextrous one on the 938. So that actually comes in really nice for lefties. Um, it's a really nice positive safety. So is, so is the Kimbers. Um, let's talk about sights. With the SIG, you get night sights, three dot combat night sights. They are awesome. Uh, they're very similar to Meprolites and Trijicon night sights. I absolutely love them. They glow nice and bright at night. The Kimber on the basic model, like the Ultra Carry, comes with standard sights. There's no night sights, it's not a three dot sight system, but this gun is super accurate. Um, let's talk about other features that the weapon has, and that is magazine capacity. It, be, this being a 9mm, the SIG comes with a single stack magazine, holds six rounds, so you can have six plus one in the chamber for seven rounds total. The Kimber comes with a factory seven round magazine, now this is actually an aftermarket Wilson Combat, but it holds standard seven rounds, plus one in the chamber, equaling eight. Now you are going to be able to get a after, or you are going to be able to get an extended mag for the SIG, making the capacity the same. So where you actually have seven in the in the mag, one in the chamber. So you will be able to get that in the future for the SIG. Um, these come with uh, G10 hog grips. This guy actually doesn't come with hog grip standard. It actually comes with their factory grip. Ryan actually put these on aftermarket. They're fantastic. If you've ever dealt with Hogue before, they're high quality on both of them. Um, this guy may eventually get a pair like this, so um, that's going to be in the future. Um, another similar feature is the trigger. Now the trigger on the Kimber is a very nice, light, four and a half pound, somewhere around there, match grade trigger. It is phenomenal. The trigger on the 938 is a heavier seven and a half to eight and a half pound trigger. The trigger also doesn't just go straight back like the Kimber, it almost uh, swoops down as you press, as you actually engage the trigger. Let's see if we can get it from this side. As you guys can see, that actually kind of moves downward instead of straight in. Um, so that is something that's kind of different. You're going to really need to make sure that you get used to the trigger on the SIG if you're going to be going with it. Accuracy between the two of these, the Kimber is by far more accurate. Um, it has match grade materials all over it, match grade barrel, um, I, I'm sorry, match grade bull barrel, match grade trigger, all these different components, and it is a very tight gun, and it can do one inch groupings at seven yards with eight rounds, no problem. Um, this guy right here, unfortunately, I haven't been able to get it to be a, a super like tack driver. Um, it shoots low, and I think part of that is because of the trigger kind of pushing down as you pull the trigger so it actually makes you aim downward so it's definitely something if you go with the SIG you want to practice with now like we said weight differences let's look at size differences and especially let's look at the bullet size you got a 45 versus a 9 millimeter this is a 230 grain spear gold dot versus a 115 grain gold dot as you guys can see 
the bullets are entirely different. The 45 is massive. It's actually double the size of the 9mm. And uh, very big punch. You're going to get a huge shock wave when you shoot somebody with this. And that is where a lot of the trauma comes from, is it's shocking the muscle and everything around it. The 9mm is a faster round than the 45, so um, just a standard 9mm will probably penetrate a little bit deeper. The 45 is going to have bone breaking power um, at 400 plus pounds per square inch. This guy is going to be in like the upper 300, somewhere around there. Um, so the 45, and actually I believe the gold dots are almost close to 500 pounds, so it's it's going to be a significant difference as far as punch, but the 9mm is still an effective round. And because of it being so much smaller, you get a lighter weight weapon, which comes in handy. So it's better than throwing a rock, and don't let anybody tell you it can't kill. It kills people all the time. It's where the military uses this as their round of choice. Let's go ahead and let's look at size. We already hit on weight. Now the size comparison, let's go ahead and line up beaver tail to beaver tail. And let's go ahead and show you guys. That is the slide length. Beaver tail to beaver tail of the guns. Uh, the Kimber is an inch difference at least. As you guys can see. Let's go ahead and let's look at the width. Now width between these two is actually very similar. Kimber is deceptive because it's rounded on top and the SIG is kind of flat. Um, and so there you go. That's, that's the biggest difference. As you guys can see, the ejection area is huge because of the 45 casing versus the 9mm casing. Let's look at the um, let's look at the height. Now the height of the gun versus the Kimber, there you go. The, the, uh, again, the Kimber is almost an inch difference, or it's actually more than an inch difference if you have that extended plate on the bottom. Um, but with, with a flat pay, base plate, it's actually a little bit less than an inch. And that is significant when it comes to these guns. Uh, again, when you put that in your pocket, it's just going to protrude that much more. Also, as you guys can see, the slide on the SIG is significantly thinner than what the Kimber is. The Kimber is really thick. Um, other than that, guys, let's go ahead and let's look at let's look at the backs of them so you guys can actually see the handle grips. Now remember, this the Kimber is wearing a, a hoe grips. The SIG is not, but when it does eventually get hoe grips, you guys can see it is going to get significantly thicker. These are both single stack magazines. Um, these are phenomenal grips, either way you go with them. If you don't put the hoe on and you have smaller hands, that's the way to go on either one. If you want a little bit thick, a little bit more thickness, throw the hoes on there. And if you have bigger hands, they're absolutely perfect. So there you go. That's the backs of the guns. Um, so the question all comes down to which one do you want to go with? And for me personally, if I'm going to be summer carrying, if I'm, it's going to be in my shorts pocket, uh, maybe I'm wearing a light uh, windbreaker or something like that, the SIG P938 is significantly smaller. It's way lighter. It's almost uh, half the weight of, of the Kimber loaded. And um, you can throw this on your hip if you needed to, and it's very light. It's going to disappear you're gonna, it's not gonna bother you. I always like to say you almost forget that you're carrying it. The Kimber, on the other hand, if you're gonna be doing a lot of, um, let's say you have a shoulder holster system or something like that, like what Ryan does, you feel comfortable carrying that, or maybe you carry on your hip only, then you can go with the Kimber. If you're gonna be throwing this in your pocket though, it's almost too much, guys. At 30, and, and I believe it comes out at around 32 ounces, fully loaded. That is just too much weight. It's going to be protruding. It's going to be pro you're going to be able to see the profile of the weapon in your pocket, and uh, you're going to alert people that you have a weapon. If you don't care about that, that's fine, and uh, go by all means get the Kimber. So it's all going to depend. If you carry the majority of the time though, and you're in a colder state such as Washington or Alaska or somewhere like that, uh, maybe Montana, you can get away with putting this in your coat pocket. Um, by all means do so and this gun would be awesome for that and I know Ryan is carrying his coat many times I've never even noticed it but the majority of the time it's on a shoulder holster or his hip so as far as price goes like we said they're very similar um, you're gonna it's it's all gonna depend guys on which version you're gonna be getting the SIG has multiple versions the Kimber has multiple versions you have the standard uh, 
Kimber Ultra Carry in black, and you can you can find these guys anywhere between six hundred and thirty dollars and well over a thousand, depending on which versions you're getting with. Now the Sig is going to run you anywhere between around six twenty, it's around six twenty to six thirty, and go all the way up to seven hundred. I have seen them go higher than that, depending on where and and who you're buying it from. But you can a lot of times find these even the higher end editions for less than $700, and that's according to the area that we're in. We're in the Puget Sound region of Washington State, and even the higher-end versions, I've talked to many gun shops, they're saying they're gonna price them around 660 to 680. Now, the reason why the Kimber goes so much higher is you throw night sights on there, it jumps 100 bucks. Cabela starts off this gun price, just the standard ultra carry, at almost 800. You throw night sights, you're at 900. You make it a stainless, you're at 1,000. You get custom grips or a different, uh, you know, maybe they'll stipple the, the, the frame a little bit differently. You're at 1100 I mean, it's called the, the Raptor. It's called something else, some Venom or so, I don't know, whatever. But there's when you get into these guns, especially the higher-end higher versions, there's a whole bunch of different accessories that you can add to the weapon um, that are going to increase the price. Now, the SIG comes with the majority of those accessories, especially the, the most important accessory, which I believe is night sights. Um, and then when you get into the different grips, you get into the different tones of the, of the metal and stuff like that, it's going to increase in price. So, depending on which one you guys go with, um, I personally go with the SIG 938. Ryan likes the Kimber, uh, and so it's all going to be preference, guys. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. If you have any questions regarding either one of these great guns, uh, feel free to ask or check out our videos. We have comprehensive videos on both of them. Um, other than that, uh, this is Chad from CNR Reviews, and I really appreciate you watching. You guys have a good day.